Hi, good morning, and well, hi, good morning, and welcome to today's products in focus. Looking at the US there, there we had a very negative day. Um, this is a three uh, black crow formation there on the candlestick formations. You can see it's a slightly smaller one than my larger one, then a massive big one there today, uh, hitting the potential support at 17,546. We've had a slight bounce this morning, but it doesn't look like it's got that much conviction. Most other European markets and Asia are down in tandem as well. If we break below 17,548, we're looking at 17,361 as the next potential support, and the technicals have turned fiercely bearish. Looking at the UK 100, uh, again, uh, very similar picture, but more aggressive. Um, we're nowhere near any major support lines. Uh, matter of fact, the next support level on the UK 100, unfortunately, is around about uh, 60, 73, which is a, a good 300 points lower than where we are right now, 400 points lower. Um, we might be able to draw another potential. This was a broken resistance, which might now act as a potential support around about 64.12, um, but it's a little bit shaky at best. Trading below both moving averages, uh, MACD's crossing the zero line, uh, MACD and slow stochastic there are both in uh, neutral territory, uh, indicating that even though we are in positive territory this morning, if things do continue to turn south, uh, there's still extra room for maneuver. So looking at Japan 225 and dollar yen still in the toilet after its uh, end of its rally, really dropping over uh, about 300 points since the, since it's, it's top there. But we'll come back to that in a second. Um, uh, again, trading below potential support 17. Uh, 17,496. Next potential support is 16,392, which also coincides with that 55 period SMA. Technicals are fiercely overbought, cross, crossing their 70% and 80% levels there, and decade of signals there to sell. Uh, we've already had volatile sessions in Japan where we've been closer to 17,000. We're currently at 17,232. Um, and today is Thursday, so we do have uh, unemployment claims and retail sales in the US today, uh, which could add some extra color um, to those non-farm payroll numbers that we had there on Friday, uh, which came out much better than expected. So a lot of uh, traders were looking for uh, additional confirmation of the strength of the US economy. And the US dollar has certainly taken a, a massive breather, having still come off more yesterday, and is uh, still on the wrong side of the line again today, to be completely honest. So we've seen a lot of yen buying, uh, a resurgence in the euro, which is surprising considering what's going on in Greece with the snap elections. Uh, but nevertheless, that's the, that's the way the chips have fallen uh, after the uh, top of the rally there uh, on Friday. So that's where we stand with uh, Japan 225. Moving on to dollar yen, as you can see there, we bounced off potential support at 17 spot 36. That's a decent move, more like a, a, a massive unwinding of long positions uh, after extended rallies right across the markets. What some traders are trying to get a gauge of right now is that is it simply just people unwinding uh, long, longer term bullish positions? Is it just a near term correction? Or are people very concerned by this big drop off in crude oil prices? Not looking at the drop off of crude oil as actually being net positive for the world economy, but looking at the drop of uh, crude oil as a complete lack of demand heading into 2015. Um, and that could be sending some signals of its own, to be completely honest. So if crude oil at these low prices are so great, why are we seeing such a spike in safe haven yen and gold buying? Um, so people are getting a little bit antsy now in the back of this um, this retreat that we've seen. But dollar yen uh, hitting 117 spot 36 this morning, but breaks that 114 spot 72. So moving on to West Texas crude, it fell another 5% yesterday, in fact, as uh, more news came out from, from the Saudis about not supporting prices, wanting to gain market share. Uh, they expect, uh, OPEC came out with a statement saying they expect 2015 to have the lowest demand in years. Um, 59.50 seems like almost a formality right now, so we're actually looking to a stage now when we're looking at the next potential support level. And I have drawn one on there at $35, but that is substantially further away, so let's go back in time. To be honest, there's maybe a very clear reason why we've selected 35 as that next potential support. So you could be looking at 55, you could go down to 46, but certainly 59.50 is a major level. And if we breach that, um, getting close to $55 probably seems like a, a realistic next potential support level to identify there. So gold is drifting ever so slightly after almost hitting potential resistance at 1242. Long legged candles here begin to look a little bit ugly for gold, incidentally. They've tried uh, four times, uh, three times, sorry, to break up higher only to get pushed back down, and yesterday pushed into negative territory, and today exactly the same. So 1218 could be 
It could be a retracement for people looking to enter new long positions for gold, anticipating that there's going to be more uncertainty and heading into Christmas as things begin to kind of quieten up in the markets, uh, which could then target 12.42, filling that break of 12.18 could target 11.86. So finishing up with euro dollar and cable, so euro dollar spiking higher, trading above the 21 period SMA. Next potential resistance, one spot 25.79, which would also coincide with the 55 period SMA. All of the technicals are completely neutral, and we are in the middle of two ranges right now, incidentally. Uh, and uh, you know, the, I think longer term, the dollar fundamentals are still quite strong, but certainly in the very near term, um, the dollar has gone into hiding. So uh, a lot of the other major FX pairs are trying to make up a little bit of lost ground. Um, looking at GBP USD to finish things up, we've hit resistance one spot 57.43. We attempted to break through it, but it looks like we had a false breakout, which also coincides with this downwards trend line that we've had in line since uh, June, the, uh, July this year. Again, technicals are quite neutral. Uh, this would be a doji formation if this uh, remains uh, in formation. Uh, as we get close to the end of today's session, obviously we've just started, but it's uh, very interesting that it coincides with that trend line quite beautifully. So if that does tend to sell off again, one spot 55, uh, one spot 56 would be the next potential support level on that. Uh, economic data wise, we've already covered uh, employment data and retail sales. Fast forward onto Friday, and you do have um, US PPI. And then you've got the University of Michigan sentiment index. To be honest, the only one that I'd really put a lot of a lot of uh, onus on would be this one, the PPI figure, uh, final demand month to month. Uh, they're not expecting a great figure, incidentally, with zero percent, but that's going to be more important than Michigan um, University of Michigan sentiment index. Keep your eye on the chart for make insights part of your layout going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.